Rishi Sunak's just been absolutely walloped by a lot of his own party, but certainly by um, most newspapers and most broadcasters because um, Rose Bank has been given the go-ahead. That's the biggest untapped field in the North Sea that we know of. Uh, and Rose Bank is about 80 miles off, the Shet off of Shetland. It's relatively accessible by North Sea standards. And now finally, uh, a, a UK-listed company, Ithaca, and the Norwegian state energy giant Equinor are going to develop that field. And it's got 300 million barrels of oil at least, right? So that's enough to keep the whole world going for three days, which doesn't sound a lot, <laughs> but, but, but it is. But by British standards, it is. But it is. it's absolutely huge. Yeah. And it's 8 billion quid's worth of investment. It's 2,500 jobs, as the GMB union, one of our main unions, keeps reminding the Labour Party. Labour, fame, you know, in the typical fashion, they, they don't agree with what the Tories are doing on Rosebank because that will upset their environmental lobby, uh, but they're not going to reverse it uh, <laughs> because that would upset their blue-collar, you know, GMB union lobby who want those jobs for their, for, their, for their members. But it makes complete sense to me that we should be using our own energy from the North Sea. I mean, why? Because there's something within the British uh, establishment now called the Climate Change Committee. That's the government's own in-house a green watchdog that has statutory powers to sort of push and goad and chide ministers if they're not doing everything that they should be doing to get us to net zero in 2050. Even the Climate Change Committee admits that we will be using oil and gas by the mid-2030s for 50% of all our energy, right? Even if renew and it's currently 70 by, by the way. The Climate Change Committee says it will still be 50% of all our energy by mid-2030. And that's if the Climate Change Committee's own estimates for the take-up and efficiency of renewables, the improvements therein, are met. And a lot of people think they won't be met. A lot of people think they're far too rosy and too optimistic. So we'll be lucky to be at only 50% oil and gas by the mid-2030s. It'll probably be higher. And even the Climate Change Committee, they say that when we are at net zero in 2050 then we'll still be using oil and gas for around 25% of all our energy. So if we're going to use oil and gas, use our own because it's cheaper. It means we get the jobs, the tax revenue and the prosperity. And it's far less carbon intensive. What's the alternative? The alternative is you drill gas in Dakota, you put it through a pipeline to an LNG terminal in the States, you, you liquefy it, which is massively carbon and energy intensive. You put it in a tanker, that goes 3,200 miles across the Atlantic, diesel powered, by the way, and then you regasify it at Milford Haven or somewhere else in mainland Europe, all massively energy intensive, but at least we can then tell ourselves, oh, this isn't our carbon footprint. But it is. We have to be smarter about this. It makes huge sense to use our own North Sea oil and gas, given that even under the most Panglossian, the most uh, rosy assumptions about our pathway towards net zero by the Climate Change Committee itself will still be using an awful lot of oil and gas for the rest of my life. So rather than just say, as the Green Party does, this is morally obscene, get real. You're going to need oil and gas at least until 2050, probably for a lot longer. It's cheaper and it's more environmentally friendly to use our own. But that's the thing, is you're putting forward a pragmatic argument. <laughs> <laughs>